We are pleased to be joined once again by our favorite movie critic, Nate Adams, here on the Oakland County Megacast. Nate, thank you for being with us today. Tyler, Erica, how's it going? Going pretty well. How are you doing? Hey, I'm having fun. You know, last night was the first time I saw a movie in a packed theater, uh, uh, Full capacity, sold out screening, and it was very invigorating. Well, of course, yesterday uh, yesterday was the first day in Michigan where a lot of those restrictions, whether it be capacity limits or uh, mask mandates and so on, were officially lifted. And so now for the theaters, as they were anticipating that, how were how are they coming along and getting ready for that? And, and were they expecting to see a big boom coming out of uh, the restrictions here in the state of Michigan? Well, it's, it's funny you say that. So the, the, it was the new Fast and Furious movie. It was a, a press screening where they, where they invite um, audience members and they pack it in. And I actually don't think that they were ready because this particular theater on Tuesday is kind of their loyalty members day. So okay. you, get, like, you get free popcorn too on top of like $5 yeah. tickets. So a, a, a big movie that's coming out this weekend on top of it was in like its largest auditorium. Uh, when I arrived, it was, it was the first time in about 16 months that I had seen a line almost out the door waiting for concessions I, because I, I'm presuming that they, you know, were trying to get back in that groove. Um, it was nice to see. It was nice to see kind of that return to normalcy. So I think as the, the weeks are coming and the movies and the pipeline is looking really strong for content, I think you're going to start seeing that more and more movie theaters are going to start uh, booming again. Nate, I need to know, before we jump into actual movies, you talk about concessions. Obviously, when you go to the movies, you're not there for the food, but what is your favorite thing to get from a concession stand in a movie when you walk in, or do you sometimes skip that and just go straight to the movie? Well, last night, I had to I had to come back out because the line was so long and I couldn't miss, oh. I couldn't miss the start of the film. But uh, my go-to, I, I love, obviously, popcorn is the number one, um, but the, the, the trick for me, is that I have to get the nacho cheddar seasoning, the popcorn seasoning that goes on it. It is a it is a game changer for me, and I just kind of did it on a whim one time, and I will never I I will never have popcorn without it. So that that is kind of my go-to. Nate Adams joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. He is a film critic from theonlycritic.com. You can also find some of his reviews on Rotten Tomatoes as well. And, and, and Nate, as we're heading into the summer season and things, at least in the United States, are looking like they're going back to normal and, and full swing. And it's a different story for other places all over the world. But yeah. in the American film market that has really seen all of its block, big blockbuster films over the last year and a half or so, be pulled out of circulation as we're going into summer, which is already usually a big time for movies. Are we? Are you expecting this to be a major blockbuster season, the likes of, that we haven't really seen in a long time? So I, I think even before the pandemic happened, 2020, which was last summer, was kind of already shaping up to be a, a, a rebuilding year for film because you know 2019 we ended Avengers Endgame, like that yeah. came on, like we were just kind of riding that wave and we were like at an all time high. Um, it didn't break records, but it was pretty robust. And so like the 2020 slate was already kind of going to be like, you saw something like you were going to get, we were always going to get Fast and Furious 9, you know, Black Widow, which is like an origin story, uh, Jungle Cruise, like a lot of uh, smaller scale films per se. I mean, Black Widow's not smaller scale, but you know what I mean? It's not the same level as, as Endgame. So a lot of those films are now that didn't get pushed to streaming services are now coming out this summer. And I don't think we are going to see, because usually a ground, a benchmark, right? You want to see a film open to $100 million. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get that this summer because a lot of the films, including Black Widow, have streaming components. Like Black Widow is going to be available at, at home on Disney Plus as well as in theaters for a $30 fee. Now, how many people fork over the $30? Personally, I'd rather see Black Widow in a movie theater is, is to remain to be seen. I still think it's going to do a decent chunk of change because it is. It does have that big screen kind of component to it. Um, Fast and Furious 9, which opens this Friday, was is only opening in theaters. So that is actually going to be the true test of what the benchmark is going to be for this season because that is a huge blockbuster franchise with a lot of built-in appeal. And if, if last night's screening was any indication, I think audiences are going to be craving that kind of that kind of big octane adventure. So I really don't know if we're going to tell, tell next summer or this Christmas are we going to actually start seeing huge, huge numbers again. The fall is very robust. But until you get to December and the, the next Spider-Man movie comes out, that is really, I think, the next film that has a true chance at cracking $100 million in the 3D opening weekend, and then um, we'll ride the wave from there. So um, I don't know if this summer is going to be huge, but uh, I guess we'll just wait and see. 
And as we are going into the summer, and some of these movies are going to be put back into circulation to be released in theaters, are you expecting to see that format of still ha of having that mixed release at home and in the theaters continue on, at least through the summer and, and even beyond that, do you expect this to be something that sustains itself after the, after the summer and after the p pandemic as well? Yeah, I think this is going to become the new norm. I think it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. In the case of Black Widow, Disney, obviously, the, their Marvel pipeline is so interconnected, especially now with their TV shows that are debuting, that they really couldn't keep delaying Black Widow because it's so integral to their timeline. So I think you're going to start seeing, you know, some movies will only be streaming. Like Luca, which was a Pixar release, only got a Disney Plus release last week, didn't go to theaters. So it's going to be case by case. And I think that's going to continue happening unless... Uh, so your, your big budget films, your franchises uh, are going to only be in theaters. And then I think a lot of the smaller stuff are either going to have hybrid releases or they're going to just go to streaming a lot sooner, like two weeks after it's in theaters, if it doesn't do very well at the box office. Uh, it, it's, it's a tricky landscape and this has been happening for a long time. It just kind of took the pandemic to accelerate these new release models. So I think it's going to still stick around well after the pandemic, what films those are, because we have seen with certain titles like uh, Godzilla versus Kong that uh, streaming and theaters can coexist because people still went to theaters, even though that they could watch it at home. Same with the con the last Conjuring film, because Warner Brothers adopted that release strategy this year that all their films are going to release in theaters and on HBO Max. Now, next year, they say they're going to get rid of that. We'll see what they we'll see when uh, 2022 rolls around. You said hybrid release. What exactly does that mean? I know we hear the word hybrid so often the past year and a half, but when it comes to releasing a movie, can we unpack that a little bit? Yeah, so there are uh, a hybrid release is just basically like a simultaneous streaming and theater release. Now, usually back pre-pandemic times, the, uh, the before times, those films were all the theaters refused to play movies that released and streaming in at home the, the nato the national association of theater owners had a strict 90 day window policy which means for 90 days your film had and before the 90 day window it was like 180 days back in like 1999 the sixth sense i think came out in august and it wasn't on video until like april of the following year so like it was it's really adapted but it was 90 days if your movie didn't abide by the 90 day window then they wouldn't play your film. They So they did not like stream. That's why Netflix was a big disruptor. They would not play Netflix films because, you know, two or three weeks later, they wanted it on their streaming service. Now you look back, the hybrid release is now starting to become kind of accepted because at least because now theaters, they don't have any leverage. They see it as, well, at least we're getting some content. We might as well try and get some money out of it. Like they could not afford to play Black Widow this summer, even though it's gonna be available at home same time. Like they have to play those films because they need they need something, they need some type of revenue. So hybrid release just really means a simultaneous uh, dual release streaming in theaters. And with that, why would any movie not do a hybrid release? Because it seems like that's the best way for movies to generate the most revenue on both ends. So what are the cons to that? Well, it's just, it cannibalizes ticket sales. Like your Fast and Furious films, they need huge, huge, huge grosses. Uh, not just uh, domestically, they need it overseas. Like the Fast and Furious franchise is a billion dollar, billions and billions of dollar grossing franchise. So the idea is if a movie releases dual, like something like Fast and Furious, I'm not saying like the smaller films, like, you know, your Trial of the Chicago 7s, you know, your your Nomadlands, like those dual releases kind of make sense because they're smaller films and they don't necessarily need the theatrical component. It's nice, but they're not necessary. But Black Widow, uh, Fast and Furious 9, all those, they need, they need grosses like to break even to get to get into the black so if it's released at home early the fear is that a piracy is the big thing a clean crisp digital copy is going to be uploaded on the internet and cannibalize ticket sales and thus um it's going to hold it back from making money quicklier but now so disney with what they do is the 30 dollar uh premier access fee that they charge you know to watch black widow at home disney gets to keep all of that $30, they are not cutting in any of like the, your Apple, your Amazons, none of those platforms are gonna get a cut of those sales. All of that money goes to Disney. So that 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 is probably the reason why they're doing that specifically, but also why theaters or why studios don't do the dual release all the time. It just has to make sense for that film. A $5 million horror film, 
you know, probably can break even off of the hybrid strategy. And they don't have to worry about piracy so much. But your big films, you know, your Suicide Squads, Jungle Cruises, Black Widow, Space Jams, all those, they need they need major grosses to make back their astronomical budgets. Nate Adams with us on the Oakland County Megacast. He's a film critic at the Only Critic. Dot com. And as we're going into a summer of movies in movie theaters, Nate, what are you looking forward to this summer to see at our local movie theaters? So my my most anticipated film is a is a uh, it's from M Night Shyamalan and it's called Old. And now I I don't really watch I don't watch trailers, but I've read the synopsis and yeah and and M Night Shyamalan has been obviously hit or miss. He kind of. He, he gave us early, like, The Sixth Sense, you know, Signs, Unbreakable, all those films with, the, you know, he, he kind of perfected the twist ending. And then he kind of hit a rough spot with, you know, The Last Airbender, The Happening, uh, Lady in the Water. All those were just kind of, uh, but he's kind of had a little bounce back recently with, with Glass, Split, and The Visit, which I kind of like. And I love, a, I love an original horror film, and I just love an original movie. Like, it's one of the few movies coming out this summer that, A, is going to theaters only, and B is not based on some type of existing property. It is an original film, and and in this day and age, that is something that we have to celebrate. So that is probably my uh, number one. I was looking forward to Top Gun Maverick, but Paramount pushed it to November, so I got to wait for that. Um, and then you know uh, that so that those are that's probably the top of my list. And in terms of on the other side of that, films that will be released hybrid or in theater, hybrid either in theaters. Or on streaming, what are some of those movies that you maybe are looking forward to seeing? Maybe not in a theater, but but at home. I kind of wish this was coming to theaters. There's a film coming out next week called The Tomorrow War, starring Chris Pratt, which is about uh, people from the f uh, the future. There's like an alien species in the future that's taking over the world or something, and they they travel back in time to fight. That was supposed to originally go to theaters. Now it's coming on Amazon Prime next Friday. I'm looking forward to that. There's this Netflix is doing this. It's called the Fear Street Trilogy. And it's based on R.L. Stein, the Goosebumps author, his series of books, which I read a long time ago. And he, these are like R-rated, like hard R horror films. And what Netflix is doing is that they're releasing three movies over three weeks. So each week there's going to be a new movie in this three-part series. So I think that is kind of interesting because that's really never been done before. So we're going to get one movie one week. We're going to get the second part the next week and then the third. So it's kind of like an episodic series, so to speak, but in movie form. So I'm really interested to see how that plays out. And of course, nostalgia. I grew up with the first Space Jam. I'm looking forward to Space Jam, A New Legacy with LeBron James. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yeah. And, and for, <laughs> for other people that are looking forward to some, some things that are going to be streaming over the summer, maybe they're not going to be not com comfortable just yet going back to the theater, but they may be down the line. And maybe they want to just stick to watching movies at home for the time being. What are some things that are coming up on streaming services that, pe that people may have that they might be excited for this summer? Well, Loki right now is is on Disney Plus, which I highly recommend. Out of the Marvel shows that Disney has churned out so far, I think Loki is is, is one of the best. It's airing every Wednesday. Uh, my favorite show, though, my absolute uh, one of the best shows of not just last year but of all time, Ted Lasso, starring Jason Sudeikis. Uh, season two starts July twenty third. Uh, it is one of the most humblest, wholesome, genuinely just nice shows. And it got it got a lot, not just me, but it got a lot of people through the pandemic. It's on Apple TV Plus. It comes out July 23rd. It's, it's just a nice, wholesome show with a great message. And it just it just makes you feel warm and fuzzy. And then I'm not sure that I can talk about it yet, but there's another Apple TV Plus show called Schmigadoon coming out uh, in July. I've seen it. And it's got uh, Cicely Strong and Keegan Michael Key. It's basically a parody of like Brigadoon and like 1940s musical. It's, it has a hellacious cast. It's, it was produced by Lorne Michaels from SNL. It's got Alan Cumming, uh, 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 Martin Short. Uh, uh, oh gosh, I am. I'm, it just it. Uh, Aaron Tavet. It just has a crazy cast, and that's coming out next month. And I think a lot of people are gonna like that too. Nate, you said you don't watch trailers. Why? Tell me about that. So it's a it's a it's a model that Detroit film critic Adam Graham kind of turned me on to. Um, I and I and I sort of started doing it um, back in the day, and I kind of lost my way a little bit. But yeah, I I don't watch trailers because I have learned, especially after going to see the film and then watching the trailer afterwards. They for me they give it gives so much away. So I will bring my uh, headphones 
into a and if i go to like a public shooting with friends or something and like you know how they always show like 20 minutes of trailers before the film i will literally put my headphones in and i will like read the news on my phone and i just won't pay i just i don't watch trailers um whenever there's like a tv spot or something that comes on tv i like i will like i go to great lengths to preserve that i like cover my ears i like look away I I go above and beyond to not get anything spoiled, to not see anything. And sometimes it's hard because when it's a film that you really want to see or I know like you're really excited about, like the temptation is so real. Uh, but uh, nope, I, I stick to my guns and I am I've um, I, I used to just leave the theater when there were trailers playing and I would come back in after the movie starts. So I've adapted a little bit. Nate but Adams, it gives it just it gives too much away. Yeah, yeah, they do. They give a lot of a lot away, especially recently. It's it seems like it's more of a recent change that they're giving more. Well, and, and they got to get people back in. They got to right. show the big stunts because they want to. They got to lure those those hesitant moviegoers, like you said, back into back into movie theaters. Absolutely, Nate Adams with us. He's a film critic at theonlycritic.com. And uh, and Nate, where can people? Of course, they can find it more at theonlycritic.com. But is there any other place that people can find more of your reviews and and your thoughts on some of the movies that are coming out over the next several months? Yeah, I got a weekly column um, in the Clinton Local. It's a newspaper. You can mm-hmm. search that on, on uh, Google. And then obviously you can go to RottenTomatoes.com and that has kind of a, of a link to all, to all my sites. And then I, I pop up on various podcasts from time to time. But um, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at The Only Critic. Nate Adams with us from The Only Critic. Dot com. He's a local film critic. Nate, anything else that you'd like to say before we let you go today? No, just uh, go and support your local theaters now that they're coming back and, and robust, you know, and, and, and savor that big screen experience. I promise you. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, feel comfortable with what you want to do. I mean, I've been vaccinated, so obviously I'm, I'm OK going out and about and doing that. So um, but, you know, there is a lot of options at home this summer, too, if you do not feel comfortable going into into theaters as well. Well, Nate, thank you very much for joining us today. Tyler, Erica, always a pleasure. Thanks so much.